Praise the Lord. Welcome back to my page. Is your sister in Christ, Chantel, the servant of God, a vessel. Today I wanted to talk about the powers of Satan. Does Satan is Satan really the person who has the power like who's doing all these evil stuff? All right? So just sit back, grab some popcorn and let's talk. All right, guys, so lately it's in, it's been in my spirit and my mind to talk about the power of Satan. Um, I'm pretty sure I probably was led by the spirit. That's probably why I was thinking about it so much. But I wanted to inform you how Satan gained so much power. You see, what happened is we... Are the body of Christ. We all, whether you are a believer or non-believer, you are a children of God. You are the child of God. You are his creation. He made you. His breath of life lives and abides in you. So that means if you're born, whether you're a spirit or angel, you belong to the most high. You belong to God. Whether you're serving Satan and you're not serving him, you still belong to God. Satan is not equal to God. He's a subordinate to God. So therefore, he could never be equal because God is what who sits on the throne. So today, I wanted to tell you today, because it's been so much in my mind, I wanted to let y'all know, Satan has no power. He's really a weak being. And the only reason why many people say he has power, and you would say he has power because of the things that's going on in the world, the troubles, the disaster. But you have to understand, God gave us principles, he gave us commandments, and he gave us laws. And God is no one to mess with or no one to disobey. And when God speak is yes and amen. And there's no, no, oh, I can't, I can't do it. Um, Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Is now in yes and amen. Just say amen. The angels of the Lord worship him day and night. You know, the trees worship him. So God has all the authority over everyone, over each individual. Whether you see someone is an atheist and they don't want to serve God, it's because he, it's because God has not called that person or have not chosen per, the person as his own, like to be saved. Let me explain something to you. The, it lets us know that the Bible lets us know that all the names of God chosen people are in the book of life. It is already written, is already stamped. He already knows who's going to heaven and he already knows who's going to hell. That's why you can find a certain situation where witches could be so evil and then all of a sudden they the, they the, they 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 turn holy and you know they're saved now and they repent for their sins and now they're walking with Christ and you find there's some who die being a witch and you find there's some of us we could we did so much flaws in our life things that should have killed us things that should have took us to the grave things that should have made us have AIDS or HIV but God saved us by grace but there's people who just did it one time or just twice or just three times and they end up having AIDS HIV you know sicknesses and stuff like that but God preserved his children he preserved you because he loves you and it's not that God doesn't love everyone he does but the fact was remember Satan was in heaven and he chose because he wanted the glory for himself he chose to do it and of course there's always followers always the yes man who went down to earth with him who was destroyed by the big fight and they went down, they were dropped down on earth. So that is why Satan came into the picture of earth and now he's tormenting us. How is it that Satan is tormenting us? Satan torments us because God allows him to. Without the approval of God, he can't do anything. 
Satan can't touch you if God don't want him to. We learned that from the book of Job, where God say, where Satan say, I bet you if you remove the hedge of protection, I bet you he will surely curse you. And God said, all right, go ahead, but don't touch his soul. Don't touch him. You can't kill him. So God do allow Satan to persecute, torment. And when you commit sin, some of the things you go through, the evil deaths that you see going around, a lot of people would say, Satan, oh, we just see that. It's a curse. It's a curse. It's God's wrath. Some of the things that's happening in the world we don't understand is a curse. That's why we as believers, we have to pray every day and repent and to ask God for repentance and forgiveness so that he could remove the curse from us. Y'all don't see how cursed the United States of America is? Coming from a, such a high class country to now, we getting all these sicknesses, these probably what's been happening. But when I look at the LGBTQ, whatever, oh, you can't even go to Burger King without them. You can't go nowhere without them saying, oh, LGBT is welcome here. Like, isn't everyone welcome here? Why does it have to be known that LGBT for everything? Oh, LGBT feel if you lose weight, you will do this. No, it was, everybody was always talking about when you lose weight. But they want LGBT to be something. That's so important. So now they're pushing it down our throat. Now you probably can't even eat Burger King because now it's like everybody against the word of God and the will of God. As soon as you accept, and that's what I'm telling you, as soon as you accept something that God does not want, you're against him. And when you're against God, he's going to show you he's God. So what he do, he's going to put persecution he going to bring the temptation just so that you can fall, so that the enemy can get you, so that the enemy, and if he love you, he'll save your life. But if he, if you wasn't one of the chosen, your blood will go down to hell. We read, we read also, and I want to let you know how you know that God allowed us to be tempted, even as individuals and as Christians. It says in Matthew 4, verse 1, Then Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil. Then Jesus was led up to the wilderness by the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. To be tempted by the devil. Because he had fasted. And Jesus wanted to see how much was he really with them. How much could he truly endure. Have you ever been a Christian and you ever had thoughts in your mind. And things that you wanted to do. Like you'd be like. Man I should just call him. But he ain't even no good. You know what. And all of a sudden you get a message from him. And he's like, no, I know I shouldn't be talking to him because he was he didn't treat me good. Now, why am I getting a mess? And you sitting up in the bed, I'm lonely. I should just text him. I'm going to just say hi. <laughs> That's the temptation that you get. And as soon as you say hi, it gets to another point and to another point until you find yourself laid up in the corner with this person that God was testing you to see if you really had the strength to let this person go. So you see, in life, all the storms you see, all the catastrophe, just praise the name of the Lord because he is God and he knows exactly what he's doing. The devil have no power. Only when you disobey God. How do we disobey God? The Bible tells you in Romans 1 verse 18, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man who suppress the truth through unrighteousness. And if, if you want to keep going, it says, for what may be known about God is clear to them since God has shown it to them, the, uh, the invisible things about him, his eternal power, his deity, have been clearly since since the creation of the world 
and are understood by the things that are made so that they are without excuse. That means you cannot have excuse why you're not serving God, why you're not obeying his commandment. The word is everywhere. We have amazing people who are preaching the word every day on YouTube. You have amazing people on Instagram. You have amazing pastors and preachers who take their time to go on Facebook. The word is preached everywhere. And the more you get closer to God and the more you look at, let me tell you something. One of the things I want you guys to stay, pay close attention to is try to obey his principles, try to obey the laws of God, and try to obey the commandments of God. Just like when God tell the women, when you're about to pray and when you're about to come to him, cover your head. Don't try to go around and think that you, you can be God homie where he'll let you slide. Or he ain't worried about that. He ain't too serious about that. God write his laws for a reason. There's a reason why he say cover your head. When you come into his presence, cover your head. When you're about to speak to him, when you're about to prophesy, he say cover your hair. God have laws and we have to... We have to obey just like Satan who's so rebellious and who's so destructive and who's so evil, but he still obeys the laws of God. He know God will destroy his whole empire if he does not obey God. So he know the only time he can come is when God allow him to come. So that means if something's going on in someone's life, and it's because they're not living in the ways of God. They're not obeying the commandment of God. But he's who so call upon the Lord. The Lord will set you free in your time of trouble. Just like you will have persecution as Christian. I'm not going to sit there and tell you that you will have temptation. Just because you have to understand Satan is always in the court talking about, yeah, she Christian today, but I bet you the mind she ain't. Put that, put that, put that show on Queen of the South. I bet you I'll get her. Put another episode. And a lot of us, what happened is because we distracted to the worldly desires, we like it, we love it actually, and it's raw and it's cool. So we say, this is what we do. We say, I'm gonna just watch this episode, then I'll come right back to God. You know, I'm gonna just go to this party. Mm-hmm. And, and Lord. Protect me when I go, and I'm, I am ain't going to go no more. You know, I'm going to just, you know, lie a little bit so I could get this paper. But, Lord, I hope you don't see. Lord, forgive me. You know, I'm, I'm just gossip a little bit because I don't want them to think I'm uncool or I'm not the same like how I used to be. You know, I'll just do things that God have asked me not to do just so that I could be present as a person who's still cool and the same in this world. But he who suffers, he who carry his cross, he who loves God, and when you love God, that means you love his own commandment. You come in agreement with everything he say. You do it not because you want to, but you just do it because you just do it. Oh my God, it's just, it's crazy. To serve God is a lot. You know, it was a lot of things. I got, I had so much to say, guys. Like, I used to just like, I used to put my lashes, and I'm not going to say put lashes is a sin, but it's something it did to my spirit when I put it. It's, it's, a, it's a feeling of pride that I had. It's a feeling of, that I had. And when I remove it, I saw how humble I could become. I could become relaxed. But when I had it, girl, don't let me come out that shower without me taking a selfie. You know, but praise the Lord. I watched my ways and I actually took it into my consideration to observe my life. And observe myself and my simplicity and how I was when I was like that in the world. And God cleansed me and he restored me. He allowed me to see that. He wanted me to see that. And sometimes I'll sit here and my past will try to show up in my face. And I'll be like, devil, you a lie. You might as well get out of my face because I didn't even know that. 
and I could see that spirit just getting out, releasing, releasing. Sometimes I said, God, well, I'm still going through persecution. But you know what? You got to go through that so you can get stronger. You got to go through some things in life so God can see how committed you are to him. You got to go through them people t- talking about you, refusing you for what you got to say. You got to go through that. You got to go through that because, baby, you're about to save somebody's life. You're about to be, you're about to be a, a kingdom, you know, prayer warrior. You about to, you about to save a soldier. You got to, you got to allow, you got to allow things to happen so that God can reveal himself to you and reveal to you what he's doing in your life. So today I just wanted to let you know the devil don't have no power on you, but it's you who give him the power when you go against God's will, when you don't obey the laws and commandments. When you're not strong, when you're not fasting, when you're not praying, when you're not seeking God, then you become weak to his his ways. Like he, he try to make himself look strong because the tactic he use, you have you don't have the knowledge and understanding, you don't have the equipment to battle just the little things that he bring your way or the big things that he bring your way. But when you in the word, when you consistent with God, when you're praying and you're seeking, then you will see all all he's doing in the spirit, all he's doing in the flesh. And that's what I had today. So God bless you and have a good day. Bye.